So before we continue, let me invite Jose on stage from our customer, <laughs> Mercado Maiko. I finish, I finish my intro. <laughs> okay. Who traveled, traveled around the world from Mexico, brought with you some uh, mezcal. 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 Yeah. Okay, I promise, <laughs> I, I promise to uh, uh, drink it tonight with him, and in return, he will drink some of our rum. I will. Okay, <laughs> and all of, you, of course, all of you guys are invited. So, Jose, the stage is yours. Thank you, Boris. <laughs> So, hello everyone. It's so good to be here, really. Uh, I, I'm having a blast here in Excite. I want to thank you everyone for your, your warmth. And I want to especially thank my host, uh, Andrew Gerasimov, who has been just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, a, little, a little bit uh, I'm talking today about Duplo and uh, how we are uh, reshaping grocery supply in Mexico and uh, Latin America. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I am Jose Manuel Esparza. I'm head of digital commerce in Mercado Maico. Uh, I'm a physicist turned digital business uh, entrepreneur and intrapreneur. Uh, I have 13 years of experience with uh, B2B digital products and platforms for micro businesses in Latin America. And, uh, and another thing, as you know, um, I'm kind of splitting Boris's presentation. So I just realized that I'm this like living, breathing YouTube ad. So, <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Duplo was born within Maico. We are a CPE wholesaler uh, in northeastern Mexico, and we have spent the last 30 years uh, boosting Mexico's number one family venture, which is the Tiendita de la Esquina. But what actually are Tienditas? Well, they are mom and pop grocery shops, also known as Tante Maladen. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but why are tienditas relevant today? Uh, it's not about all, all uh, just the nostalgia or the folklore. Um, I actually, in my research, uh, found this song uh, from Udo Jürgens about Tante Emma's. So, <laughs> I mean, um, at least in Mexico. Uh, tienditas actually account for over 50% of uh, grocery distribution and over 78% of household expense in food and beverage. Um, in fact, if you see the dark spots uh, on this map, those are regions in Mexico where you can find no supermarkets, no convenience stores. So that's why tienditas are relevant today and will remain relevant in the foreseeable future. So, um, a little bit about shop owners, tenderos. Um, these are neighborhood heroes, actually, and they are facing challenges. Uh, for example, the tiendita is actually built within their homes, in their garages, in their living rooms. So, they basically live in the tiendita. Uh, so, their working hours, are their waking hours. Uh, for example, if a tiendita wants to resupply, it has to stop service, close shop, pay for a truck, then spend a couple hours at the wholesaler, return and reopen, up to six times per week. So it's actually crazy. Um, and, and just as they are facing challenges, they also pose challenges. Because um, they tend to be uh, digital laggers, on average, 42 years old, uh, with no credit cards, no, no bank accounts, because they, they are averse to registration. Um, basically, they work with a pen and paper operation, so no computers at the Tiendita. And, um, <clears throat> I mean, 
We wanted to help these heroes in their mission of serving their communities. So what did we actually do? Um, we became their digital sidekicks. So, <laughs> and that we had a plan to address these uh, challenges. For example, uh, first, we, need, we knew we needed to leverage the power of headless. Uh, we knew that the traditional e-commerce approach, the commoditized commerce, such as Boris was uh, telling us about, uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't do the trick. We knew that we needed to uh, create a special experience in which our customers would be comfortable. So, um, actually, uh, well, this is where Spryker comes in, obviously. And uh, actually, Spryker is the centerpiece of our digital ecosystem. Uh, and this uh, actually enables for orders to flow seamlessly from our customers' fingertips all the way to our delivery team. So uh, it's, it's actually uh, what allows us to focus on service and not on technology, because that's not the relevant part here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, another thing, uh, if you remember, these uh, tenderos do not use credit cards nor bank accounts. So we actually take cash. Our delivery team, um, they deliver the orders, but, but they also collect cash. Another, another thing, and very important, it's uh, the human touch. So we actually have teams of colleagues working in uh, customer acquisition, customer retention, customer service, delivery, obviously. Um, all with the goal to eliminate this technological friction. So, <clears throat> if you remember, there are no computers in the tiendita, but every tendero and um, all the members of their families have smartphones. So, leveraging the power of Headless, we created this mobile-first experience, uh, powered by Spryker, and uh, here's a brief look at it. Uh, this is our Android app. You can see um, it focuses on easy service. Search comes first, because uh, around 70% of products added to cart actually come from search. Actually, you can always find a search button uh, visible. Uh, we use the familiar re retailing styles. We have a sticky menu. We have this accessible cart. We have these large product tiles. Uh, you can add products directly from the grid. You don't need to actually go into the product pages. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, I could spend like two hours talking about features, but that's not uh, what I really want to say. Uh, the story I want to tell is, so what actually happened? Because <clears throat> we launched in uh, November the 1st, last year, 2021, uh, we launched in a relatively small city in Mexico, Saltillo. But, uh, it's about uh, one million inhabitants. Uh, it's a by, by Mexican standards, yeah. <laughs> I know. <coughs> I know, I know. <laughs> and uh, what we wanted to do is uh, validate our business model and uh, really warm up before trying to scale. So what happened was that in these six months, Duplo has uh, already become 5.7% of total revenue. So uh, this is achieved by having over 3,000 tienditas signing up into our platform. This is roughly 50% of all tienditas in Saltillo. So it's crazy. Uh, we have delivered more than 12,000 orders, and our customers, on average, uh, order once every 8.5 days, and on average, uh, a ticket of $125. Uh, <laughs> so, if you see this map, it, it actually shows the, the nice density that uh, where our transacting customers are. Um, but well, of course, we have learned some lessons uh, first of all, the city size matters a lot. In our case, a city the size of Saltillo 
Uh, once we achieve a product market fit, we ran out of early adopters like super fast. A couple of months, early adopters were gone. Uh, and we had to face really early uh, the challenges of addressing the early majorities. So, uh, I mean, it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't ideal, but uh, another thing was there's, no, there's actually no digital bonus. And what I mean by this, uh, at least in Mexico, as a consumer, you are willing to pay a little extra for your groceries to be delivered to your house. This is not the case with tenderos, because they are not willing for their margins to be eroded just for the convenience. So what we found is that you actually need to be as good as or better than the best of traditional wholesalers. Um, what we do see is a differentiated behavior, uh, a much nicer product mix, much more profitable, um, a higher average ticket. It's actually around twice as high than in, in the physical store. Um, Sign-ups are fairly easy. The focus is on retention. And um, another very important thing was you need an auto-scalable operation, because at one point, we were re receiving so much orders that we couldn't service them. And we had to pause. And you don't want that. You want your growth to be determined by the market, not by your installed capacity. So uh, that was a very important lesson. So what's next? Uh, we feel our model has been validated. So we are now ready to scale. And how does this scaling look like? Well, it begins actually in Monterrey. It's a city uh, like, like uh, 40 minutes to the, to the uh, east of Saltillo. It's, Mexi uh, it's Mexico's second largest city. Uh, it's around 6 million inhabitants. Uh, we have approximately 14,000 tienditas there. And if you widen the radius uh, a little bit, you have 17,000 tienditas there. Uh, we want to launch on October the 1st of this year, and this is actually our first step in the roadmap. Um, as you remember, uh, I, I mentioned that Saltillo was a city um, in which we run, ran out of early adopters pretty quickly because of its size. But actually, it is Mexico's 15th largest city. So there's not a lot, a lot of cities that would, would pose uh, less challenges than Saltillo. Here is where Latin America comes, uh, becomes really important. So this actually is uh, a roadmap. On 22, we open Monterrey. On 23, Mexico City, Guadalajara, which is fairly the same size as, uh, Monte uh, as Monterrey. 24, that's when we go to Latin America, to Sao Paulo. Uh, we keep uh, growing in Mexico with Puebla, Toluca, Tijuana. 25, we go to Buenos Aires, Rio de Janeiro. We continue in Mexico, in León, Querétaro, Ciudad Juárez. Uh, on 26, we go to Lima, Bogotá, Santiago, Belo Horizonte. Uh, and we continue in Mexico, in Mérida, in San Luis, and in Aguascalientes. So this is how we are reshaping uh, grocery supplies in Latin America. So actually, if you want to help us do this faster, do this more robustly, we are looking for partners to help, help us uh, supercharge tienditas. So the story continues. Uh, this is all for me. So, danke. Thank you so much. Jose, yeah. thank you so much. What are you thank most you. excited about this year? There are so many things coming up. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the opening of Monterrey is pretty exciting yeah. because, uh, I mean, it's a large city. It is. <laughs> what, I, uh, what have you been your key learnings last year? Like uh, you mentioned already quite a bit, but uh, what will you prepare for Monterrey? Oh, well, I mean, all of that. But uh, something that I, I heard yesterday at Customer Day really resonated with me. And it was um, 
the technological part is the easy part. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> At least with Spryker. Yeah, yeah <laughs> no, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the case, okay. yeah. <laughs> Solve operations and you conquer the world. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Jose. One thing I'm a bit disappointed about, I think I didn't get the memo about the mezcal. Oh, too bad. <laughs> too bad? Okay. It was, it was gone like in two seconds. Are you kidding me? It was Andrew. <laughs> 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 Nevertheless, I got a present for you. We have oh. a collector's item for you, our amazing Spryker backpack. And we'd like to thank you for sharing all those insights. And we wish you very good luck. And are excited to join you on your path to greatness across Latin America. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Jose. <laughs> amazing.